average for a gallon of self-serve unleaded gasoline, approaching an all-time record. Uh, you know, higher prices are here to stay. Maybe it's related to the fact that you said we couldn't get a pipeline in from Canada. He's running for re-election, uh, that the American people are not happy with a expensive gasoline policy. There's no silver bullet. Anybody who tells you otherwise isn't really looking for a solution. So there's not a whole lot uh, that can be done. Been the same script for 30 years. It's like a bad rerun. On March 27, 2012, the Obama administration and the Environmental Protection Agency revealed a new set of rules and guidelines for carbon dioxide emissions for new coal power plants to generate a maximum of 1,000 pounds per megawatt hour. While these rules do not apply to many of the plants that exist in the United States, the announcement sets a bold statement in how new coal power plants adapt to stricter regulation. Former West Virginia Governor and current U.S. Senator Joe Manchin stated, This EPA is fully engaging in a war on coal, even though this country will continue to rely on coal as an affordable, stable, and abundant energy source for decades to come. All over America, politicians in the coal industry in general feel that coal has been given a death sentence. We are here to propose a solution that will pair coal with an unlikely partner. But what may come as a surprise is the solution. I think the best solution to high oil prices is high oil prices. They spur us to conserve. They compel us to buy and drive more fuel-efficient cars. And I think, most importantly, they lend viability to money-intensive alternative energy projects, the kind that get mothballed when oil prices are low. Believe it or not, we could replace up to 17% of the oil we import for transportation with this fuel that we can grow right here in the United States. And that means greater energy security, that means lower costs, it means more jobs, it means a stronger economy. What President Obama was referring to was algae biofuels. It gave us an idea to relook at an odd yet potentially groundbreaking partnership that can promote sustainability, algae carbon sequestration. Microalgae have photosynthetic properties that take in CO2 and sunlight. They grow rapidly on any body of water, not dependent on the type of land, such as farmland or desert areas. Microalgae bioreactors built next to a coal plant will receive a majority of the CO2. Microalgae would grow rapidly, be extracted, and then converted to animal feed and biodiesel for transportation. In the Batam Island of Indonesia, plans are set to make a farm of many algae bioreactors. This animation provided by Algae Tech showcases a sustainable model of investing in the engineering infrastructure of bioreactors in open pond systems. This model is called the Algae Integrated Management System, or AIMSYS. Such systems can use wastewater to grow microalgae and can act as nitrogen and phosphate filters to reduce water treatment costs as well. The only way to get ahead is the continuing to invest into research and development in the biochemistry, biotechnology, and the engineering of equipment for algae carbon frustration. It is a win-win situation for the environment, the coal power plants, and the future of energy policy in the United States.